G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going with metallics again today. So I think I've pretty much finished my series of three flip cut pours with the colours. Uh, the blue, the red, the turquoise, the green, the pink, the purple. Did I say brown? Can't remember. Um, now, metallics is the last one. Unless you guys can think of another colour that I've missed that I can do. Oh, I do want to do my blue one again. I said that I wanted to redo my blue one, so I'll do that. But today's metallics. Now, earlier on, oh, last year, when I was still trying to figure out metallics, I did this one. This one had a lot of black in it. I actually had three cups of black in it because I wanted the metallics to pop. But it's too dark. And as you can see, my cells aren't the best. Uh, they're quite elongated. I've got this big wormy thing in here. These copper ones, they're kind of all blended together. They're not separate. There's clumps. It's not my best work. So anyway, I went again and I did this big boy here. Hopefully he'll fit into the frame. Um, a bit too busy for my liking. And this one had two cups of black in it. Still a little on the dark side, I think. But my cells, it's just too busy. And this was the five, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, six flip and drags. Um, so I've got a lot of lines. My cells, they're quite small. They're quite, um, they're not that well formed. They're, they're not, they need to be separated. I think I had five drops of oil per cup. So anyway, I'm going to go again because I want my cells to be more separate. So and I'll, it's just it's just too busy. So let's go again, hey? Eh? See if I've learned anything. So I'm going to do my new technique where I flip the cups over and tilt a little bit, and then torch, and then keep tilting. So let's do that. Uh, the pouring medium is the 70% glue wall, 30% water. Now, it's really hard for me to tell you what ratios I've done because they're all different. My blacks and my whites, I always do uh, 60 grams pouring medium, 50 grams of paint, or 50 grams pouring medium, 40 grams of paint, 10 grams less because I know that those, those colors are thick. My gold, I pretty much had to do, um, what did I do? Like, 80 grams of paint to 40 grams of pouring medium. So I had to thicken that up a lot. Still feels a bit thin. The only one that was 50-50 was my copper. This one I had to thicken up. Oh, the silver was, the silver I only had to thicken up a little bit. I'll show you the, I'll show you the consistency. So, but you have to do that with most metallics, you have to thicken them up. You can't just say 50-50, even though they look really thick in the jar. When you mix them with your pouring medium, they just, most of them just go really, really thin. So, and then your cells will stretch. So if you don't, if you've done a metallic pour and your cells are all wobbly and you've got all these zigzaggy lines and everything's stretched out, that's why, because you haven't made your metallics thick enough. You can't treat them like normal paints. And if you're a beginner, I would advise you not to use metallics. Um, I struggle with them too, to this day. I'm still learning how to, to use them. They're, they're a different creature. Just thinking that's... Ah, it'll be alright. No, let's add some more paint. It just feels a little bit thin to me still. Even though, look at that, when you get it out of the jar, look how thick it is. But once you've mixed it up, it changes, so just be aware of that. It's not the same thing. Oops, and I'm dripping. So, um, I have got 800 grams of mixed paint for this pour. And I'm going to put three drops of treadmill silicone into each cup. Except the black and the white. Hopefully that's alright. Uh, this one I made a mistake. I was supposed to put in 
50 grams of pouring medium and 70 grams of paint and I put in 70 grams of pouring medium and then I had to put in like 90 grams of paint so I've got more paint there than I need. This is my rose gold. I add two parts gold to one part copper and I get a lovely rose gold so that's that one. I'm just thickening it up just a touch as well because the gold in it is very thin but then the copper part of it is quite thick so you're just going to have to practice and experiment with your metallics if you want to use metallics just going to have to practice okay let's go three drops if your mix is thick enough this one will need four because there's so much in it but I'm not going to use it all. I won't do the white. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can see the bubbles on because I've only just made the paint up. It's a bit bubbly, but that's okay. Give it a good stir. Yeah, I won't use all this. So I don't need so much paint. I'll put it aside and use it for something else, I guess. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't need to be stirring that one again. Silly me. So I've got two shades of gold. There's this pale gold, which is called brilliant gold. And then I've got my darker gold, which is just called metallic gold. And they're all by Global today. That's this one here, the metallic gold. Once I flip the cups over, I'll show you what the colors are in case you're wanting to do the same thing. Okay, and I've had to separate them. Um, so I've sort of put the black between the gold and the copper, and then I've got the copper with a lighter gold. This is my only issue, these two here, the two light ones, but I didn't want the white next to the silver, so and I didn't want the white next to the black. So that's about the only way I figured it could work. See how they're still pouring in really quite runny. I'm hoping that I've thickened it up enough. You look at it and you think, oh yeah, that's thick enough, but it's so deceptive. These metallics, they're tricky. But I'll have a go with my new technique, as I said, and then if it doesn't work, I'll just scrape it and then I'll make them thicker again because I want to get it right. I haven't done a metallic pour that I really love. That last one, even though it's quite busy, I still prefer it to the, the one that's got more black in it, but it's still, I don't love it. I'm just not that happy with it. So I have to keep going until I get it right, which is really annoying, isn't it? But that's me, I just have to do it. I have to keep going until I can do it to the best of my ability and then I can go tick, done, move on to the next thing. So I'm not sure if only having one cup of black is going to be good. Maybe I won't have enough contrast, I'm not sure. That was the other thing that I was a bit worried about. So if I don't have enough contrast, if it's just too pale without the extra cup of black, I'll, again, I'll scrape it, add two cups of black like I did with the other, my big metallic one. I've probably got too much paint here, so I'm not going to scrape my cups. I will with the black, but the others, I won't scrape the cups. So I'll just pour out because I think I've got a bit much when I was mixing them and I thought oh it's too thin still so then I added more paint and added more paint so ended up having more than 800 grams. I didn't make up a lot of the copper though so I will use all that. I found that the copper really takes over. My gold was kind of hidden in the last one. It didn't really come through very much. That's another reason why I thought I'll take out 
the extra black and just have a little bit more of the, the metallics. So gold really didn't show up very well. So I'll use all my gold. The so golds don't look real nice when they're wet, do they? You've got to wait till they dry and then you get that beautiful, shiny, glossy, metallic look. At the moment, they just kind of look a bit black, like a beigey colour. Uh, let's put some white on. This little cup at the end is missing out, as usual. So since I've been thinning out my white, I haven't had any split or curdled paint. Yay! So I think I've figured that out, that it's just when it's too thick that that happens. Um, let's put a little bit of black and then finish off with the silver. Oh, does anyone out there in YouTube land know what I can use uh, with my phone because I've got my phone up there it's a Samsung Galaxy Note and I'm using that to record but does anyone know if I can attach like a Wi-Fi cordless little microphone so you guys can hear me a little bit better No, like I don't want a cord hanging down because it's going to come across the canvas and I'm probably going to pull the camera down on top of myself. But um, I was thinking there must be some kind of a microphone that I can just wear that will talk to my phone and then the sound will be better because I'm about one and a half metres away from my camera and I kind of forget to sort of talk loudly sometimes so you might have trouble hearing me but I don't know. If there's a way that I can wear a microphone, then that would be good. Now, let's do the first, the middle cup first. Where's my centre? There. Or oh, I'll flip him over first. Make sure I go to the sides. Give this room, this one room to spread. Okay, uh, colours. So we have metallic silver. As I said, all in the global today. And then my two golds are these two, brilliant gold and metallic gold. That's the difference in them. Just a bit darker. One's darker than the other. And you really won't be able to tell until it's dry. Now this one is just half, as I said, two parts of that gold and then one part of the copper. So that's the copper that I'm using. And then, as usual, black and white. I don't know what to do next after I've done, well, I'm going to do my blue one. And then, um, I don't know, if you guys got any suggestions? I wouldn't mind doing a really big, maybe for my lounge room, um, one like this. The my balloon dips with the, these colours. Do you like those colours? It's a bit oriental looking, isn't it? But I've got really pretty cells, so it's a good combination of of colours I think. So thinking about doing a really big one of those for my lounge room. What do you think? Would you like to see that? I bet you I can't do it again on a big one. It's a challenge. All right, let's uh, do this. Oh, pretty. Pretty, pretty. That pale gold kind of looks a bit brown doesn't it with the black well, it looks as if I've got plenty of black anyway we don't need any more black let's pop some of this on the corners it still feels thin doesn't it look at that flowing into each other, even though I thickened them up as much as I could. 
It's still flowing really fast. This one's only got a little bit of room. I'm going to try and move this over a bit if I can before I flip him over. This one's spread a lot. So if they're spreading a lot, then you know your mix is still quite thin. Which is so frustrating because I thickened it up heaps. ends there. I didn't get those big blobby bits that I normally get. It's kind of like a caramel latte kind of a look. And the cups so pretty. Okay, so I've got my corners covered there. I'll wipe up my mess. All right. Yeah, it's still, it's still quite thin, isn't it? It's like it's dripping off. Oh well. The technique that I'm going to do though with the tilting halfway first really helps if you've got you know a slightly thinner mix because if I had to torch now and my cells would come up you can see how big they are already um, and then I would tilt and they would just get really big and wobbly and out of shape and I don't want out of shape cells. The whole idea of getting cells is to have them a nice round shape with multicolors in them. That's the whole idea of, of getting cells. So I can't understand why, you know, people think, oh, I'm just going to tilt and get wobbly cells. And it's still attractive, I just don't see the point of it. The whole idea is getting those nice round cells. In my opinion, and that is just my opinion. A lot of people like the wobbly cells. Get that black bit blob off. There we go, I've got him off. This one can stay, he's quite pretty, even though he's going to stretch. I can't believe how thin it is. And I made it, everything so much thicker. Well, I've written down what I've done, I always do. When I'm doing something new, I'll always write down what I've done. Uh, like how much pouring medium I added to which colour paints. So that when I go again, I just look at that and I go, okay, so this paint was, the gold was, um, what did I say? 90 grams of gold to 40 grams of pouring medium or something like that. 80 to 30, anyway, something like that, I can't remember. So I would know that I will have to really thicken that up and add more of the gold next time. Just gonna do these sides while I'm here. And it's still dripping off. Drip, drip, drip. Sides are really pretty though, They've got lovely contrasting colors going down. Okay, so now I will torch. I'm just going to put a bit of paint in this corner right here. She won't pick that up. I'm going to use a little bit of paint out of my cup. If there's any left at all. over that corner it's just having the weight of that paint there that thick paint it wants to go over and it'll drag the rest over with it so that's the idea of that I'll just throw those cups out rightio let's torch and I've got my big butane torch that I like to use it's got a big nozzle you hold it up high it covers a really wide area so I don't have to get too close and risk getting colonies or colonies of cells or caterpillars because I'm going round in circles and I'm nice and high. So I don't want too many cells this time. You can see where all the bubbles are popping. See where the little dots are hitting? The heat's hitting the surface, creating little, those little dots. 
Okay, so I'm just going to wait for a minute and see what happens. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to ruin this one. This is a special one. Try again with the metallics. Here they come. Little cells. Still looks quite murky at the moment, but we won't know until the cells pop up. But I only use one cup of black. Getting a little bit closer now because that first round it kind of just popped the bubbles. Second round I'm getting a little bit close to bring the um, oil up to the surface. I think I got a bit close there. Look at all that that's happening. My little colony. That's all right. It doesn't matter if you have like a little colony there, then if you've got some negative space somewhere else, some background, kind of balances it out. You just don't want that everywhere, I think. Okay, let's go again in this section here. There's not much happening there. Go over there. Here they come, little copper ones popping through. See, they come, they come up afterwards. So while you're torching, you're not going to see them pop up. So you just have to wait. And then once they've come up, then I can see that I need some more over here. So let's do that. And down here. Oops, got a little bit close there. I got really close here and I've got a caterpillar because I got too close. Rushing, don't rush better off going a few times keep it nice and high so you've got close here as well there's little colonies there but if you like the little colonies a lot of people you can actually go like that zoom 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 straight down and you get your little colonies like that if that's what you want For me I prefer a broad circular heat like that and then I get sort of dotted cells here and there now I need some more up here still Sorry about taking so long, but I just want to take my time and get the cells where I want them. So here they are here, little ones popping up. They will continue to grow. Um, and I think I need some more in here. If, oh, maybe not, because that's quite busy, isn't it? Let's leave it for now. A little bit on this corner here. So you can take your time and work out where you want your cells. I'll change my mind, I do want some just there. But I'll go really high up. So I don't want another colony just next to that colony. Anything happening? There's a few, a few popping up. Oh, too close. Look at them. All right, that's enough. Try not to get too close, but they're not too bad actually. They kind of spread out. Righto, I think that's really pretty. I've got a good combination um, of colours of cells. I've got some dark ones here, got some light ones here. They're all multicoloured. A little bit busy there in the that section there. Um, now this is where I'm going to struggle with this area here, and I have oh, what have I got? I've got a tiny bit of gold left. I might just put some of that on. Actually, if I'm going to do that, you know what? You know the drill, don't you? I need to thin it. I can't leave it like that. I need to thin it with a bit of water before I pop it on there. Just a few drops because there's not much in there. I don't want this paint getting stuck on some thicker paint. It has this one has to be thinner. So needs to be watered down if I'm going to use it as a flow enhancer so that the other paint just runs over the top of it or next to it. I don't want it to create a little bump where it can't get over. That's not good. So I'm just going to put that paint in there like that. Same on this side. Probably
probably should have tilted it a little bit better before stopping to torch just to see I wasn't even watching down here I was just concentrating on the other side when I was tilting probably, probably should have watched this side as well and thought hey it needs to be a little bit more covered before I go the other way okay so that will just help pull the paint over the edge I like to have kind of a similar amount, maybe an inch all the way across the top. I don't like to have that. That's more like two and a half inches there. Okay, stop procrastinating and let's do this. Oh, that's really wet and soggy under there. I'm going to have to hold on to the push pins under here. Otherwise, my hands are going to slip. And there's nothing worse. Then you slipping when you're trying to do something or go in a particular direction and your hands slip. Come on gold, don't do this to me. You're supposed to be a flow enhancer. See how the paint's sort of stopping there at the gold? I'm going to go to that corner. Don't know if I can get to the other corner. Can I, can I, can I get to that other corner? Go slow, watching everything. Yes. Leave a tiny little bit of black on it. Woohoo, I did it! Oh, that's so pretty! Yay, finally I get a metallic that I'm happy with. Yay! That was relatively easy, wasn't it, to do? Now I'm just centering the weight of my paint, bringing it back to the centre. because I had just all tipped it that way. You just got to look at your cells and think, oh, what, where do I want to put these cells? But once you finish tilting, don't keep going. Just, you know, if you can, stop yourself. And let me look at it. Oh, it's pretty. Happy with it, and I'm really happy I didn't add extra black. Like, this has got one cup of black in it. Do I want to torch? Do I, do I? Maybe just a little bit in here, just to bring up some little baby ones and some across there. I like to sort of do them afterwards when I see, you know, where I've got some blank areas, but certainly not too much. Definitely not too much. Now, while those little cells are popping up, I'm just going to wipe the side down here, check my corners. It's a tiny little bit of white showing. I'll have to go around the other side there to see that corner. I always end up getting my fingers in the side, even though I try not to. I hold on to the push pins. I always end up touching the side a little bit, so I've cleaned that up. This corner needs a little bit of this darker colour. So, what do you think? Happy with that? <laughs> I was beginning to think that I just couldn't do it. I was going to give up thinking, no, nah, I can't do a good metallic pour. But I think it's a good metallic pour. I'm happy with it. I really am. Paints were a little bit on the thin side, as I said. Could have thickened them up again a little bit more. I should say, not again. Could have thickened them up some more. But because I used my new technique of flipping and then tilting halfway, I didn't overstretch them. I mean, see, see this one here? This was the original cell, that there. So he, he popped up right away after I just flipped the cups. So if I had torched at the beginning, pretty much all my cells would be like this. I would still have some nicer shape, but that's what I would have got. So you can see what would have happened. Um, do I need to torch anymore? These few little guys came up. These two came up. I 
think so. I think I'll um, I think I'll just leave the background as it is. You know, I didn't want the busyness, so this was the previous one. So busy, busy. Lots of cells. Hardly any background. The lines are all wiggly. The cells are a bit elongated. They're not staying in their separate space. I like space to be around my cells. I don't like them to be bumping, bumping into each other, especially up this side here where my thumb is. It's really quite messy. So look at the difference. Yay! And then this one, this was my very first one, my metallics. Had too much black in it and again too thin. So you see the difference. So hopefully I've improved Okay, let me take you down for a close-up. I'm excited about this one. I'll, um, I'll varnish this one. I'll show you guys how I varnish it. I know you've seen videos before, but uh, I think I'll use the Liquitex Gloss Medium to varnish this one. The last couple I've been using Global, and they changed my colours. They kind of changed, they brought the purple out. Not that this has got purple in it, but... I'm just going to see what happens if I use the Liquitex pouring medium, gloss medium instead. Alright, so there she is and I'll take you down for a close up. Kind of always looks different up there. Maybe the light's not as good with the um, my camera up there on the tripod. So down here, uh, what have we got? These copper cells on the bottom right, they don't have rings around them. And I'm not sure why. I must be having two um, transparent colours next to each other, maybe. You need an opaque and a, either a transparent or a semi-transparent are found to create nice rings around your cells because those ones don't have rings. And then you go up here. These ones have got rings around them. The white is definitely opaque, so it's making really pretty rings around the cells so there we go got some lovely blending and shading happening and you can still see my little stripes where the three cups met and they tend to be in the colour that I poured in last so I sort of had the, the silver and the gold last with a little bit of black between them so I've got a silver stripe on the right and then a, a gold stripe on the left which is okay it's pretty so there you go, let me know if what you think of this metallic pour and have a go, but just remember, you know, if you're not used to using metallics, really thicken them up. Even if you think, oh, this looks way, way too thick, just do it, have a go. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Oh, and I'm so excited, I've hit 50,000 subscribers overnight. I got up and it was 52. Uh, 50,200 and something and I thought oh, I missed it but uh, yes yeah, so very excited so thank you so much for all your support let's keep it going do another 50,000 hey <laughs> all right I'll see you for the next one bye for now